see right here. Good morning. Good morning from Pinhole Quilting. Pete's adjusting the camera. If you see any wobbling, that's not me wobbling. I am perfectly stationary. And if I sound slightly coldy, I am slightly coldy. Um, Pete and I, we picked up um, a nasty little cold, cold virus when we were on our travels over the weekend. And so we've been away. Not COVID. It's not COVID. We've done so many tests. We, um, we stuffed so many of those test things in wherever we're supposed to stuff them. And um, we're not COVID. We yeah. are cold. But I'm, I'm, I'm sounding much more macho than I normally do. Yes, and my voice has gone down as well. I'm definitely <laughs> alto rather than soprano. And um, we had a lovely time away. For those of you who know, we went away to the um, continent and we had a lovely time. Um, ich habe kein Deutsch. Um, sprechen Sie English um, was a phrase that I managed to retrieve from the back of my mind from when I spoke a little bit of German in my one year of learning German from Signora Chu, who was Italian but taught us German in a unique Italian accent at school. And uh, German, uh, yeah, we were in Cologne, which is a beautiful city for those of you who are familiar with it. And I know we have some German handy quilter owners uh, who will be watching. And it's an absolutely beautiful city because Pete's son, Simon, was marrying the lovely Katarina in Cologne at the Rat House, the historic Rat House in Cologne, the day after Carnival. And um, we got to see Carnival, which is where everybody goes mad in the city. And then we had a couple of days of celebration. It was a beautiful wedding. And I captured, and well, Pete captured it as well, because we do wedding photography too. And that was beautiful. So we had a lovely day celebrating Simon and Katerina's wedding. But we came back with a cold. Hopefully not a permanent reminder of the wedding. Hopefully we'll shift it in due course. But at the moment, we've got both got sort of, well, I've still got a sore throat. And I won't be going anywhere too far away from Norton Beach for a while. In the meantime, we're pleased to be able to uh, be here on Facebook Live again, the first time for a few weeks, and to share with you some of the things on Handy Quilter and from here from Pinhole Quilting. We have had deliveries. We have had deliveries. We had a delivery just before we went away. And um, I don't know whether you can hear laughter in the background. There's obviously much hilarity going on next door. We're on a, a light industrial estate here, and we have some lovely neighbors. And one of them, um, Matt, he makes uh, kitchens. And this, he's always laughing. He's always laughing. He obviously has a good time making kitchens. And he makes, uh, he's a French polisher, I think, as well. But anyway, obviously he enjoys his job. Right, so Pete's gone to get his, <laughs> he's still laughing. <laughs> his laughter makes me laugh. Uh, so anyway, we hope that we're live. Pete, can you, are we definitely live, Pete? Yes, yes. Oh, good, good, good. Um, good, so good. Um, I, every now and then I think of a German phrase and we had to, we drove over there. We drove over Eurotunnel. That was fun. That was absolutely fun, wasn't it, Pete? We did road trip. Sorry, I keep thinking about the road trip. We had so much fun on the road trip. And we did this thing on the way back, by the way. We did this thing where we can do karaoke in our car. And on the very last bit, we did Bohemian Rhapsody, Pete and I singing Bohemian Rhapsody <laughs> karaoke. But luckily, he decided to stop it just when we got to that bit where you do the mad head, head banging bit as we drove into the services. He decided to pause it because I, I do love that bit where you go mad, mad head banging. But I was driving, so it's probably not wise. Anyway. Um, now, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about new products. We've got new products on our website, and those include uh, some things that when Pete comes back and he's set up his laptop, I'm going to show you. And we're going to talk about the Moxie. We're going to do some Moxie demonstrations. So if you're interested in our long arm, I think you're going to be interested in watching some of the, the live demos that we're going to have lined up for you um, in due course. And we're going to do quilting from the back. Um, that's pantographs, pantographs. I hope you can hear me because I sound a little bit like I'm getting feedback in my head and it doesn't sound like I'm, I'm just in my head at the moment. Uh, so I've lined up some new fabric on here. We've got our demonstration fabric. So I've got some pens, pencils, and we're going to talk about somebody who's had their quilt uh, machine, the Moxie, for six months or so. Yeah, just over six months. Who came on Linda Jackson's course. 
And we're going to talk about a few other things, aren't we, Pete? You are. Have you got any? I am. Aren't we, Pete? It's we. Absolutely. Weird. So, Good yes, just say hello to a few people. We've yeah. got Hazel Gray. Hello, Hazel. Maya. I hope you've got your threads. Finally. I'm really, I'm really sorry about that. Gosh, we had such a problem with uh, UPS pickups last week. Yes. It didn't pick up. Deliveries are a bit of a challenge still. They are so a we've challenge. Got Maya Dyer from Chepstow. Or... Maya. 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 Maya, I think. Maya. This and Maya. Uh, Claire Shortland, as always. Oh, hello, Claire. I will answer your question. I've got to ask the question of our supplier about your dream big. Helen. Thank you for that. Helen Burnham. Morning. Hello, Helen. Helen. Another Moxie owner. Yes. And, uh, oh, I'm just going to have some water. <laughs> we've got Sylvia Grayson online. Oh, hello, Sylvia. And Di Bell, Trisha Lockhart. Hi, Di. Harmony Quilting. Oh, Trisha. Oh, Harmony. Yeah, we've got your machine. Transformer. Plugs. Jan Collett. Hello, Janice. Yeah, it's very difficult to see on this phone here. Who's Pete's looking at the isn't. smallest screen in the world. Yeah, Kate Irvin. I'm looking at the back of the smallest screen in the world. Hello, Kate in Northern Ireland. Oh, hi, Kate. We've just had somebody else in Belfast buy a Moxie this week, so yes. she'll be getting her machine soon. We have, we have. That's very exciting. Jenny Humphrey. So there's a few. Sorry, I can't see all of you. Mar Gre Greta. Morning, Greta. Morning, Carol Monroe. Oh, yes. Hello, Greta. And Georgie. Hi, Georgie. Georgie's done some beautiful work following the workshop with Linda Jackson. We were very impressed. Very impressed, Georgie. Well, we've been very impressed with all of the progress because, you know, the point is, you know, comparison is the thief of joy, as we know, and everybody has their long arm learning curve. And we, we would, actually, I was delighted with um, one of our customers who'd, you know, struggled to sort of get started. And I think this is the thing, isn't it? It's the enjoyment of the journey. The affair is to move, Proust. And um, that is one of the things is to not consider the destination and uh, to enjoy the journey, <laughs> rather like a road trip, referring back to the road trip. Enjoy you see, sometimes I don't want to get to my destination. I did say that to Pete. When, when I saw we were approaching Cologne, massive, massive cathedral, I actually, I actually kind of go, oh, oh. Because I've done some massive road trips, 28, no, 28,000 miles, 28,000 miles around Australia. Yes, 28,000 miles around Australia. That's a big road trip. 28,000 miles? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. That's, but that's the equivalent of driving around the world. I know. Are you sure? Yes, it is, yes. Yes, it, I do know. I logged the whole have lot. You, have you ever considered your carbon footprint? I don't like to think of it. But I don't have children, so I, I'm not procreated my carbon footprint to anybody else. Don't forget that. There we go. Mm. You can't really claim not having children as carbon credits, I don't think. Well, you know, offsetting. Okay, there's another discussion. Schumacher. <laughs> Small is beautiful. I'll leave that one for anybody else to read. There we go. Now, can we look at that about these new pens? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> We've got... The, we, did, we brought these in for uh, Linda's course, the Rotaring, oops, Rotaring Tiki, and I finally got them on the website. Oh, I do apologise. My, my, nail, my nail varnish has not <laughs> been topped up since the wedding. I, I, sorry, that's terrible. I'll stop that. Um, these are the Rotaring Tiki, 0.5, and we've got 0.7 as well. Comes with, default is HB. Um, so, so these are pencils. These are pencils. These are a propelling pencil pre-filled with your HBs and then you can and it has a little um it has a nice mm, flowing nice flowing pencil and you can get 12 leads in the refills 0.5 or you can get 0.7 in the equivalent so you buy your 0.5 for your 0.5 your 0.7 for your 0.7 they're all on the website now okay a couple of comments to say that our feed has gone a bit pixelated. Has it? Oh, um, there's a, an eraser inside here. I wonder if there's an issue with the uh, Wi-Fi. I haven't got my... Um, yeah, but mm. I haven't got my... Um, I haven't got my, you know, my router. That's nothing to do with my router, Pete, because my router isn't on. 
My my other router isn't on. So. Oh, so I don't know why we're pixelated. That seems to be a general problem. Is it? Yes. That will. Mm, it's nothing that I've changed this week, though. You know, I haven't. No, I'm not sure what we can do about that. No, mm. that will just be a broadband issue. It was fine. Okay, this is the Rotring Tiki Graphic Pen. So once you've done your pencil, and perhaps if you want to uh, to move on to doing some more permanent, beautiful drawings. You see? This is a nice point. I mean, point five is kind of like my preferred one. And Lorraine Gray asked last time whether it smells. Obviously, uh, we still have sense of smell. Otherwise, it would be a COVID symptom and we would be more concerned. <laughs> but we both have sense of smell. And, but this doesn't smell. Unlike the other make, popular make, Sharpie, which does smell. Lindy, we're definitely just going to keep going, pixelated or not. It seems to be coming in and out. Yeah, we can't do anything about it because because actually that is just going straight into our broadband router. I don't have any extenders, nothing. It's just... There we go. Nice. Oh, and if you when you're practicing drawing, keep your arm elevated. Yeah, so the elbow isn't rested on anything here. So this no, is more this is akin more to like... you moving the machine. Yeah. There we go. Little muscle shells. Yeah, so it's a nice flowing pen. It is. It's lovely. And it actually just, you know, the thing about using lovely tools, it, and the thing about, I think, for me, the thing about using things like rotoring is you just feel more creative. I don't know why that is. Ah, oh, that's nice. Dimension. I love creating dimension. I do love creating dimension. I don't know why that is, but I've always been a bit of a dimensional person. <clears throat> so, those are all on the website. Now, other new things. What do we, oh, yes, yeah, centering tape. Pete didn't get my centering tape. Let me get my centering tape. We've got centering tape. It's been requested by a couple of people. Not easy to come by uh, in the UK, so we've brought some in. There isn't a picture on the website yet, but I will put one up once this has been put on um, so, our new, on our 12-foot studio frame. So these are for those of you with <clears throat> frame systems. So this is either um, something you can use on, on the back for, for pantographs. It's double-sided. On one side, you've got it so that the zero, you put it on your idler or lazy bar, which is this fourth rail. This is a four rail system on our loft frame, four rail system on our studio frame. And I will talk about four rail systems versus three rail systems when I talk about this frame when I'm demonstrating the Moxie in just a moment. But what you'll see here, I'm in front of the light. Where's the light? Oh, we're okay. both in front of the light. It's is that okay? okay? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there's the zero effectively. And you put it so it's in the center. Now, I actually haven't loaded this particularly central. Um, but what you will do is as you progress down your quilt, you will make sure that your quilt is beautifully centered. And that will help you. It's particularly good, actually. So. I mean, for things like pro stitcher. On the other side, you've got inches and centimeters. OK. And it goes, just goes from zero to 120. I mean, not all tape measures are up to 120 or three meters. Okay, so that's now, it's under long arm, double-sided centering. I've spelt it the American way, I have. I <coughs> confess. But in the description, I put center with R-E. I couldn't help myself. I had to correct it. I saw there was a very good article online by Kimmy Brunner about using a centering tape. That yeah. might be worth looking at. Okay, that's interesting, Pete. Kimmy is very good on those technical things. 
because she used to write for Machine Quilting Unlimited, I think it was, like a magazine that was sad, sadly discontinued. Old copies of that, I have some old copies of it, and they were excellent. Kimmy is, in fact, you can probably find some of, the co some of those articles online. I, th I think that's what w this was. It was uh, an old article from that magazine that is yeah. now online, all about using a centering tape on your long arm yeah. frame. And some of them are on her website, and um, they are really excellent reference articles uh, for <coughs> things like um, straightening your, um, your quilt, scent straightening your backing fabric, things like that. So question, how do you attach the tape to the bar? I just um, use some sticky tape. Use some clear tape. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, demo, demo. Now, the Moxie, Moxie 15 inch long arm, stitch regulated, two different types of stitch regulation, precision, cruise, or continuous. Well, I'm starting to use continuous more as a method of describing it. And genuinely, um, our UK customers are understanding continuous rather than cruise. And they go, oh, yeah, now I understand. Cruise, didn't understand. Continuous. Sorry for the American audience, but continuous makes a lot more sense to us. It continuously sews even when you pause. Manual as well. Manual's what you've got when you've got domestic, obviously. You just manually sew and the stitch varies in length depending on how fast you move the machine around. So just to demonstrate what we normally do when we teach, we teach that you use the control of the machine is basically the handles we can use with our right hand. It's actually much easier to demonstrate of course if you're right-handed and uh, we can demonstrate for left-handed people too but needle up needle down is on this left-handed control. It's the far left button and I do needle down needle up and I bring up the bobbin thread, I hold both thread ends and I come back to that hole and I just secure the stitches by doing needle down and needle up a few times. I'm in precision mode which basically means the machine will not stitch until I move it because it's a regulated machine. The control in terms of the machine knowing how fast to move or how fast to stitch is done through encoders on the carriage both in the Y and on the X axis and that's through little encoders on wheels those rubberized wheels measure how fast the carriage is being moved so there's one on the carriage and there's one on the X axis that runs on the frame and so when I press the start button which is on my right hand handlebar which is also the stop button if I press it and it changes on the screen here. You can't see it, but actually the little house goes from black to green. Nothing happens until <coughs> I move it. And then when I pause, it stops. I have it set to 11 stitches per inch. Good morning, Heidi. Heidi's joining us for the first time live. You haven't, haven't said where you're from, Heidi. Could equally be an English name or something more exotic, like, you know, Swiss or German. Or we do have a Heidi Austrian. Simkin. Is it not Heidi Simkin? And uh, Marianne Tenkata says oh, Marianne. she likes the continuous description much better. Oh, good job, Marianne. Thank you for that endorsement. I appreciate that. And I should attribute it to Judy Strain. There we go. Yep, might so, want to dial yeah. down that lighting a bit, Liz. Yep. Make, it, make it easier on the camera. So to change anything on the Moxie, it's not a touch screen, but actually it's quite intuitive. We use the handlebars, and by doing minus and plus together, it takes you into this little nine... Um, this is the menu screen? Yeah, the menu screen. And then you paste through the menu screen, select what you want, and then just dial back the lighting like that. That's it. And then back. There you go. 
So Hyde is in Yorkshire, but is originally South African. Ah, very good. I've had my little warm up of drawing. So now I'm gonna do some of those things I was drawing. Just free motion from the front. <laughs> Sorry, were we supposed to be doing you can stop Facebook now, yes. Live? <laughs> I was away. Look, I'd rather be quilting. It says everything on my apron you need to know, okay? <sighs> Morning, Elaine. Morning, Elaine. Which Elaine? Another, Elaine Tabner. So another oh, of our Moxie, Moxie owners. Owner. Elaine. Yeah. Pete well, and I have been talking about what we were talking about for his birthday coming up. Yeah. Gave us that little... Idea. Judy's happy with the name check for the continuous. Yes, there you go. There we are, Judy. Takes an educator. Yes. And also, Judy, every time I install either a Sweet 16 or Capri using the Insight table, you remember how you gave me that little clue as to how the, the first, the, like the middle bit with the fold of the metal piece bent the bent bits, the flanges, bend down every time I think of you. Thank you for that little tip. Bet you bend down, so the bent bits go down. I think of you every single time. There we go. So Liz Marshman says, have you, Liz, ever had a go at McTavishing quilting? I have the book. I have the book. I have the book. We believe now, you. We if believe who, you. Who doesn't know about McTavishing? Lots of people possibly, but thanks for that little tip there on McTavishing. I have the original Karen McTavish book with the DVD. The DVD isn't in the book because it's at home. So, McTavishing. Here's the original book. Thank you, Liz. Mastering the Art of McTavishing. Originally published in... <coughs> it's not signed by Karen, sadly. Uh, right, this, this version, 2005. So this is a fairly old book, but in this beautiful book, Basic McTavishing, we have the basic construct of McTavishing. Prior to Beth Ann McNeh, um, Namesh. Beth Namesh. Namesh, uh, which is also um, someone whose name is given to a technique or design of quilting, Nameshing, Karen McTavish was previously the only person whose name was given to a style of quilting, McTavishing. So here we go. It starts with a little S and then we build up and backtrack in order to go on to the next thing. And it's incredible how it builds up. It's a really, really beautiful way of creating texture. Um, I don't know if you can see it because quite often it's, it forms the background and it creates a really there's the yeah, DVD. it's not easy to see on there. Is no. there a nice um, um, example in there? So Greta is McTavishing as we speak. Oh, Greta. Fantastic. On the Sweet 16 that you've got, that's actually my old Sweet 16. Greta has my old Sweet 16. I, I know that from Sweet 16 is fabulous. Here we go. That's probably a better... This sort of fill. Yeah, it's a very effective fill. Yeah, really effective. Um, yeah, I mean, this is these are variations of. Here we go. These these are actually variations. 
I mean, that's not, that's paisley. Curls and swirls. Background fillers, basic McTavishing is probably, here we go. There's mini McTavishing. I mean, you can see that one. Anyway, great book. Great book. Really amazing. I mean, some of these quilts are a little more dated now, but as a basic and really good book, Mastering the Art of McTavishing. Thank you, Liz. So, S. And then what you do is you go back up. I'm going to go back up this outer one halfway, say, and then. And then you can actually do filler if you want to. Like that. And then you could start a new one. And then you go back along one and then go a new one. Like that. If I move away, I just pull up my throat. When you want to finish, by the way, pull a length. Bit more. I just want to get the machine out of the way so you can see what I've done. And then you come back and then cut the ends off or chuck the ends in. So there we go. That's kind of like McTavishing, McTavishing, McTavishing. And you can fill in areas if you, I would have obviously filled this area in as well. But this is like your basic S, S. And then you would come off here, etc. So it's a very quick and relatively straightforward way yeah. of. So just to show you, Filling your you could quilt. have gone down here. This is not the best way. We get panned up. Panda's uh, easier. So the kind of thing you could have just gone back up here. Like that. And then you could have come down here. And then you could have gone up here, da -da, like this, just to show you. And then you'd have gone back here, da -da, bom -bom, ba -dum, like that. And then you could have done some fill, like a little clamshelly thing. And this would look very effective, like that. And over here. There we go. I yeah. think that's given a good sense. Yep. Great. Thanks, Liz. McTavishing is really nice as background. What it does is, you know, like any background filler, it creates this lovely texture and um, rather like Nameshing does. Good. So, oh, here we go. Here we go. Helen Burnham says that she's posted a YouTube recently with some updated ideas. So is, presumably that's the McTavishing you're talking it about. It is, there, but Helen. segueing beautifully onto Carol Watson. Carol's first quilt on the Moxie. Carol Watson 2. Ca Carol Watson 2. We so have two Carol, Carol Watsons as customers. Yeah, so so the Carol, this is Carol Watson 2 who's done this, these yeah. quilts. So this was Carol's first quilt on the Moxie. She bought it six months ago. And this is based on a class that she was doing some workshops with Beth Ann Namesh. And this is some of the texture that she's created. Two layers of, of wadding. So this has got some beautiful density. These are the sort of lovely textural um, icons that she's created with sort of Catherine wheels that she's done here. There's some lovely swirls, really sort of practicing here, some, some you yeah. know, nice swirls here and So on here. the cream sections, you can see the quilting more clearly because of the patterning on the colored section. But look, look here, this is, yep. this is first quilt. First quilt. On the Moxie. Carol Watson too. And this is lovely. I mean, I love this. I like these uh, sort of pinwheels here. Yeah. Sort of cathedral window type things. I don't know what you call those. I think beth has got a name for those. Then the second quilt on the Moxie. It's a really nice quilt. I think worth just showing this one. Um, it's very effective. Yeah. From a distance as well, this yeah. one. It's a very nice quilt. It is. So what then, she's done um, <clears throat> here is in each of these sections of the white on white and then the pink, 
she sort of picked out different types of the designs that she was learning with Beth Ann. And it's an online course that she's taken. And it's really effective. Again, yeah, as you said, Catherine, that's all right. I love this one. This is probably my favorite because it's sort of, it's a lovely texture and then some really nice little pebbling that she's got. So for the pebbling, we would use a different setting. I'll show you that just in a second. So there's a, a quite a lot of there's quilting on this. a lot of leaf, leaf sort of designs here. A lot of quilting. But actually, it's really effective. Beautiful here, these leaf designs as well. And um, some lovely, I mean, she's got some really nice circle motion going here. Good job, Carol. Fantastic for, I mean, what, what really impresses me is yeah, this is someone who'd not used, no, you won't, you won't see much on the back, oh, it's no. just a star design. Yeah, but it just shows you whether there are any tension issues and I, oh, can't, yeah, I no. can't see anything. Very, very good. It's spot on. No, it is spot on. Carol is meticulous, by the way. Have you noticed her binding? Her binding is fabulous. Fabulous. Excellent. I know. Good job, Carol. Right, so settings wise, what we would do, something like pebbling, um, we would we'd have a different setting. I mean, I, I'd got that in precision, actually. That's not always, I mean, precision's great because it literally stops when, when, you want you, when you stop. Again, I'm gonna go into my menu, minus and plus press together. Then I'm gonna go into the selection screen of the stitch regulation. Here I've got precision, C for continuous. And I'm going to move down to continuous mode. I'm going to select it with needle up, needle down. And in the continuous mode, I can select how many stitches per minute I want it set to. So 50, I would use that for, say, rulers. 50 means 50 stitches per minute. That's less than one every, every second, isn't it? Yes. And so I am <coughs> higher because I want basically to be doing it for pebbling, I want that much, much higher. So something like 250 and minus and plus together sets that. And I also want the stitches per inch to be higher as well. So I'm going to go 14. Now I'll bring my thread up. Hold on. That should run freely, by the way. That's my bobbin thread coming straight off the bobbin. That should run freely. I always check that. Don't want any issues. I've got the open toe foot on. Comes with standard foot and open toe foot as standard. Lots of other feet to select from on the handy quilter. We go through that on the foundation course, which you get as standard with our moxie purchase. And now I'm ready to go. So on my handlebars, I press start. It's going to go at 14 stitches per inch and 250. There's quite a nice little mnemonic that um, I sometimes use, which is small, small, bigger, biggest. I wasn't using it then, I was doing a bit random. But small, small, bigger, biggest actually does give you a nice random assortment. But the other thing we can do is we can do like a bigger one. And then surround it by smaller ones.
what that does is it, it makes it really stand out. And that can be really quite nice, sort of randomly placed around. And it really, if you use a double wadding on that, it really pops. Okay, so that's all the free motion quilting I wanted to do. Now I'm going to do some demonstration of quilting from the back. I'm going to change the foot to a glide foot and talk about how we do that. So this is the glide foot. We use the glide foot because we'll be going on and off the quilt. So let's just change that. Good evening, Maya from Melbourne. Oh. With us again? From Melbourne, yes. That's where my niece is. That's where the cricket's going to be soon. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the important stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And if we hadn't had COVID, you know, Pete, we would have potentially oh, really wanted to be out there. It would have been nice, wouldn't it? Me? I've never been to Australia. No, I know. That's why. Not very good for the green credentials again, though, is it? No, it's not. No. No, we can't, can't drive there. No, we couldn't drive. Would have got wet. Right. Okay. So, we're going to move this on because I want to do some quilting from the back. So, to move the quilt on, let's just talk very quickly. Four rail frame. This three is the rail loft frame. frame. Loft frame. Now, back in the day, way back, late 90s, I used to sell three rail wooden quilting frames. And you ask, what's a three rail quilting frame? So a three rail quilting frame, it didn't used to have two at the back here. And what used to happen is that quilt used to build up and build up. And every time you moved on, you used to have to adjust the height of the quilt off the base of the machine because the quilt sandwich used to get bigger and bigger. And, bigger. and of course, it used to push down on the machine, which was a domestic machine. We used to have a wooden quilting frame and a domestic machine. And your quilting space just used to get smaller and smaller, and it was about seven inches. And uh, by the time you got to the end of the quilt, you had about two inches quilting space, which was not very effective. And those, we know that that is not as good as what we've got here. Yes, right. We know that. So three rail quilting system is not very good because what you want is a four rail quilting system. So forget the three rail systems. They don't work. You need a four rail. With a four rail, you have quilt top, quilt backing, and an idler bar, which keeps the frame always, at the, the quilt always at the same level. And then the quilt top is taken up on this quilt take up rail here. And no matter how far along you, on your quilt you are, this will always just be building up on here and not affecting how far off the quilt your machine is. Brilliant. Four rail quilt system. You need a four rail. That's what all our systems are that are a no based frame. We don't sell three, three rail, no based quilt frames. We don't. Handy quilters don't make them. And if you're looking at a new quilting frame, check them out. Make sure it's a four rail. Loft frame, Studio frame, gallery frame, they all have four rails. If you're looking at the little foot frame and you get a little buddy, you effectively end up with a four rail system. There we go. Here endeth the lesson. Now, quilting from the back is a very effective way of ending up with a quilting edge to edge. This is an optional extra on the, on the Moxie. We have a design back here. We use a laser light. We use the optional extra of the handles at the back here. And actually, before I go around the back, sorry, I need to change that setting that I did on the continuous. And I'm just going to reduce it from 14 stitches per inch to 11. And I'm also going to reduce the number of stitches to from 250 to 150. Oh, 125. Okay. Because there's a screen at the front. You don't get a screen at the back. So we set that up first. I finger trace my design to become familiar with it. And that way I can see exactly. So we go. this we'll is the here. pantograph that comes with the quilt from the back kit. It's a very effective design. Yeah. And I'm going to start just here because this is just beyond where I did my little doodly flip pedals. And I just want to make sure that my whole design 
can be stitched, which it can. So Liz is looking at the laser here, yep. at, at the two edges of the, I don't know if we can see the laser very well on the... The, the laser light is pointing to this point here, uh, Yes. and then the laser light is pointing to this point here. And I can see on the machine, on the quilt, that I can quilt, actually I can get a bit closer, I could quilt up to here. So I'm just going to move my laser light so that I can quilt right to the edge of the, of the quilt. I can actually quilt right up to there, okay? And I can quilt up to here. So that's the maximum extent. I want to quilt all the way to the edge of my quilt. So I'm going to drop my needle just here and pick up the... Look, I can, even though I'm little, I am little. Simon's new wife is tall, isn't she, Pete? She is very tall. Katerina is not a small person. But her best woman, six foot. I felt like a very small person. Right, away we go. So this is moving the machine from the back here and following the design by visually looking at where yeah. the laser is, which is just knocked massively, I think. So I did. <laughs> I'll put it back. I just knocked it massively. Yeah, don't do that. I just wanted to check that everything was stitching okay, but don't knock it. Um, your needle is your laser, so I could put it back because I knew exactly where I'd stopped. Okay, now I'm just going to continue. Check it again. That looks okay. and so on and I would just keep going like that I've got videos on YouTube of stitching this out in various ways. I've got like a speeded up version. I've got me doing some quilts I did for my brother at the cotton patch of some K facet ones. I've got lots of examples. If you just type in pantograph on our YouTube channel, you can see all of those. So that is Moxie quilting from the back, pantographs, just illustrating the fact that even if you don't feel confident doing this, when you're starting out, there's an option for you. And this would enable you to get started quickly and you know, sometimes it's all about the patchwork and it's all about the design of the patchwork and it's all about the fabric and you don't want the quilting to really dominate. In which case, pick a blending thread, make sure that the, the blending thread is not going to dominate your, your fabric and just have the quilting just to hold the fabric together. And then something like this design would be perfect for you. So what we're doing is basically, anybody's interested in the Moxie and maybe doesn't have a long arm yet, Moxie is a great one for beginners. You get everything straight out the box to get started. Literally, the bobbin is wound for you. You, you, know, you get it already there. You get, some, um, you get an app that shows you how to put it all together. So you know, it's a really good starting one. It's your first long arm. Plus, we've got some great deals on quilting from the back. We've got some great deals on the ruler system as well, which we haven't illustrated today, but you know, we'll be doing that in the future too. So talk to us, come along for a demonstration. We can fix up a demonstration and just let us know. Plus, if you've already got a mox and you don't have quilting from the back, we have some special offers. So just email us or give us a call. We'd love to talk to you. 
And if you've um, wanted to, if you need any accessories and things, the stock came in yesterday. We've updated the website. You should find that if you'd asked to be emailed when everything was back in stock, you should have already received an email about that because Pete's been updating the stock. So hopefully that's everything that we need to talk about, Pete. I think so. yeah. Wow. Wow, it's been a full virus laden. No, no. <laughs> it's been a full, slightly um, busy session. But I hope that it's been of interest to everybody who's been watching. And next week, we're not, we're not doing it next week, are we? Are we well, we're, we're away. We're away. So we'll have to decide whether we can oh, do we something. Can, we, can we can still do, do something. something. We're away. I think we should do we're, something remotely next week. We'll do something remotely. Might be from the corner of a, a field somewhere. But we'll, we'll, oh yeah, we could do something. We could, yeah, we could. We'll do something. And the following week, we'll definitely do something because we'll be back. And uh, we look forward to seeing you then. So, hope you're having a fun time with a quilting machine somewhere, whether it be currently domestic, maybe thinking long arms. Um, and wherever you are in the world, have a fun weekend, people. All right. Catch you later. Bye now.